it was really great to see so many fan arts, so many letters, so many fiction, yeah. um, cosplays, cosplays. The reactions were fantastic, way be beyond our previous expectations. It was impossible to expect a, a huge community like this and so passionate fans yeah, and it, it, it's great. So. <laughs> Thank you. you yeah. <laughs> we started the project by making the game we wanted to make for ourselves, but at the end it's really making a game for the players because it's no, that's what's important. Uh, so welcome to the dev commentary of Life is Strange. We're really happy to, to be there and talk about the game. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks. I'm Raoul Barbet, one of the co-game directors of the game. And I'm Michel Kors, the other co-game director of the game. We, we are two game directors working on, the, on one project, so it's it really interesting to, to work that way. Uh, it can be hard sometimes, but I think it's... It's a really interesting creative process because we can challenge each other on a lot of yeah. aspects and, and find out always the better solution for what's best for yeah. the game. If only Michel or Raoul was directing the game, the game would have been really different. They, they both know uh, how to make a game, like they, they're not stuck in their uh, field of expertise. They know a lot of things about each department and they had this direct contact with the teams. I'm more from the audiovisual and uh, movie uh, scene, so I, I was in charge of all the, the cameras with the, the camera team. I work a lot with the sound design team also, with the music. And um, myself, um, since I'm from an illustration background, I was my specialties were more on the art direction. and. Uh, Later, um, for this game, I'm starting to work way more with the narrative team and, and the voice recording sessions. It was, it was cool because they, had, uh, they have the similar vision uh, for the game, so we didn't have a yes from one and a no from the other. Actually, Michelle and Raoul are in the game, when you think about it, because so there are two game directors, so we have a contraction, which, which is Michelle. But uh, there is, if you put it the other way around, it's Raoul and Michel, so it's Rachel. I'm pretty sure they did it on purpose. The idea behind the game was to, because we have both of us worked on Remember Me, and uh, there were some sequences in this game called uh, Memory Remixes. And uh, one of the founders, uh, Hervé Bonin, uh, uh, asked this small core team to, to, to think about a game with this kind of mechanism. Very quickly he came. Uh, the episodic adventure game because we wanted really to, to do something like that. There is really a lot of good ways to, new ways to, interactive ways to tell stories. On an episodic format you have to make a lot of choice uh, for episode one because you won't be able to change after. Uh, a lot of assets have to be there in episode one. So the menu is one of uh, those assets. It was interesting because there was a lot of variations. We, we did a lot of tries of what we wanted to show in this menu. Uh, the idea is, was really to basically show the most important locations of the game. So we, can, we can see the, the Blackwell Academy on, on, on the top right, we can see the lighthouse, we can see the, the, the town of Arcadia Bay. We were really trying to give a sense of location and just showing like, the, the, game, the game world with the menu. We really wanted to, uh, to make the player feel that all areas are connected and the menu is a great way to do that. One of the main uh, importance for us uh, for the game was to have a, a peaceful game with this sense of you can take your time and we, we wanted to reflect that from the menu so we, we worked on those small wind effects and the leaves that are going around and the, the nice and soft music. It was just when you start the game you should feel quite um, at peace and com comfortable. And, and even uh, when, when the menu evolves in each episode, there is sm so some small details that are changing. In, in for the menu for episode four, you have the, the, the beach whaled. That's this kind of details we wanted to, to just add with the variations of the menu. The game takes place in, in Oregon, in the Pacific Northwest, in the United States. When I went back there in, on, on, on vacations, I've, I've seen a lot of places that really looks like what we did in the game. So I guess we... It was a really big job of references to be sure that everything was correct, uh, but it, it's also something that's really exciting about making a game, that you have to, to look at everything and to reproduce reality, and with, of course, our, our own lens and, and, and stylizations, but uh, we really wanted this to feel like being in Oregon. Sometimes people ask us if we choose to have a game in the United States for marketing, for selling the game. We, we knew that we were fans of 
like TV shows like Twin Peaks or X Files. They have those, those trees and the Pacific Northwest feeling. Uh, I think they are a great example of a small community uh, thinking that they, everybody knows each other and everybody is happy. But when you put something uh, inside this community, uh, it could be something supernatural. Uh, yeah. you, you discover uh, a lot more. And it's really a way to, to shift things around and to bring chaos and interesting variations on the, on the characters. And at the, in the end, Life is Strange is really a, a, a game and a story about the characters, about their lives. It's not a story about the sci-fi elements. The sci-fi elements are just, for, uh, for us, they were just here to make, make things interesting. Okay, so let's let's play the game and yeah, let's play Life is Strange. Yeah. So this is the very beginning of the game. Uh, I think this is one of the very difficult seconds of the beginning of the production because, as you yeah, this is the first time the player will see what the game looks like and will be inside the story. Uh, so we got a lot of discussion about this one and a lot of discussion about the shots. Uh, oh, we are going to present uh, Max character. Uh, the important, as this is a video game, is the player to know where he has to go and the objective of, the, of, the, of each scene. This scene is a link to the end of the game, of course, and it's also to, to close the loop and uh, begin with this scene. And when you know the end of the game, was something we really wanted to have. So we can see all the FX and we've got one FX artist very talented, Thomas. Uh, here you can see a lot yeah, of his work, uh, the all the particles, the tornado. We, we took a lot of time to work on this yeah. tornado because when you're working on an episodic game, it's it's important to still hook the player from episode one. So that's 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 the kind of discussion we had we had about reason to when should we put something that has a bit more impact and that feels something that shows the player that there is something bigger. Uh, so this introduction was was a bit like that. We wanted in, in Life is Strange the player to always know what Max is knowing and. To, to just be with her. At this moment, Max doesn't know where she is and the player doesn't know it either. Whoa. We're back to, to the high school, and oh, which is one of the most important settings of the game, of course, the high school setting and the Blackwell Academy. High school is something where the player will feel comfortable because he knows it, but the transition from the cliff to there is the twist of being, having something really different and that should hook the player to say, oh, it's not just a teen story, it's, there is more to it. And then, of course, we can go much more, much over than that and twist it and change the characters. But it was an interesting starting point uh, creatively. This kind of uh, introduction is really important because in one uh, sequence with some shots you have to discover all the different characters, the main ones, so you will see of course Jefferson, Kate and Victoria. And it was quite hard to decide between not showing too much, to not break the idea of the game, to not be too big before, uh, compared to what the game would be, would, be, would be after. There is a lot of themes of big, big ideas on, on, on the game. And of course, photography is one, one of it, because photography is still a way to, to look back to the past. It's linked to the theme of rewind and time manipulation and nostalgia. And that's one of the reasons why Max came back to Arcadia Bay to attend this photography class. I think for the player to be like Max uh, back in this town when she, she don't know everyone, but you, you've got to respect the schedule, it's really as a player something great uh, to, to discover. Also the, the lighting was really important in this scene to, to break the, the cliff uh, ambience by this uh, sunny atmosphere and all this light coming from the windows. And maybe we, we decided to, to, to have a, a private high school rather than just a regular high school for, of course, for the photography course. But it was also to be able to have less students because we wanted the story to be a bit more intimate. We didn't want it to be like a, this huge high school with so many students. But based on what the player is doing, you can really learn more about them and see that they are actually not just the stereotype and the, the archetype. You, you would think they are. This is still a perfect example of how episodic is hard. Because if <laughs> yeah. you look closely at this poster, there is a mistake on it. It says that the, the exhibition takes place in the De Jong Museum of Art, yeah, when actually it's not, la it's not that in episode five, it's the Zeitgeist Gallery. We have a really great community. Uh, so <laughs> thank, you, thank you, guys. Uh, and people found out this mistake. And yes, it is a mistake. It's uh, when in episode five, we found out that we couldn't, it couldn't be a museum. It was too, too big, so it has to be mm. an art gallery. So we changed the name. And yes, there is a mistake like this in episode 
to do it. Was about to. You Welcome to the real world. We really wanted to to have this feeling of being part of a world high school. So it means a lot of people. It means bullying. It means uh, uh, difficulties when you're a teenager in this kind of world. Uh, uh, showing the different cliques and different kind of, 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 uh, of teenagers. I think a lot of players love this introduction. The use of music here is really important. Is As Max feels insecure in this atmosphere, uh, we wanted her to isolate. And the music is a, a great way of isolate yourself when you just want to be on your own. and. So since the beginning of the game, we were working uh, with uh, license tracks, license music. We, we test when we are testing on prototypes and synths. We put some license tracks from artists we love, and Sin Matters was one of them. And when we ask uh, Jonathan Morali, who is the lead uh, of Sin Matters, if it's possible to use his music, uh, he's, he's a gamer, so it was really happy to have this new experience. And for us, it, yeah, it's just incredible to work with him. And this kind of uh, editing is really, really difficult to do because you have to to choose the important uh, moment in a song and to choose the, the right images. Because our writer, Jean-Luc, uh, has written many, many scenes built around music. The, the edit is, based, is uh, based on the music. It's not uh, the other way. The music is really important in the game. It, it explains a lot about the characters. Uh, because the choice of the music, the choice of the artist means a lot. For example, Chloe won't listen to the same artist as Max. For the anecdote, for this uh, guitar part, we asked the lead uh, singer of uh, Sin Matters to, to take his guitar and to play on top of uh, Gonzalez's song in a clumsy way to be sure that it, it would be like Max playing guitar. Okay, That's so the objective of this scene was to go into the bathroom. I think you can hear, hear the great uh, sound work. Uh, Sebastian, no, your your leader, has worked a lot on this kind of effects. When you you take out your ear plug, uh, you you can hear more the the ambience. And this kind of art uh, is done by uh, our main concept artist. Uh, we got like three, four concept artists working yeah. on the game. Uh, with Edouard, uh, Edouard who has made a lot of artwork. He was the one uh, concept work. artist. So basically in the beginning we do a lot of uh, documentation, like we do a lot of research from all those pictures we can find on the internet. Like every room, every character needs to tell you a story, what they, who they are, what they do. And just for following the scene, even for the for the for the mood when it's still the rhythm of the game. So we wanted this scene in the bathroom to have a really cold and harsher and more contrasty lighting, be, to 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 be different from the the the, the 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 soft and and warm lighting from from the from the art class before. Seeing this scene, uh, there was here one of the mistakes we have done uh, with the game. Uh, for example, when Max is a. Uh, Tearing oh, yeah. apart uh, Polaroid. Uh, in fact, I don't know if you have tried to tear apart a Polaroid, but it's quite impossible. Yeah, you can. We, uh, we, we tried it. We, we can't. You can't do it. It's so, too too strong. It's so plastic, it's and it's of, impossible uh, to tear it like she does. But of course, there is a lot of symbolic uh, behind this, and uh, so we decided to keep it, uh, even if it's yeah. non-realistic. Yeah, maybe it's a bad. Uh, and bad Polaroid uh, quality and, and we can do it. Be. So uh, You can see the butterfly coming in from the window. There's a lot of uh, symbol behind this. Uh, the bu butterfly, of course, with all the butterfly effects thing and the fact that uh, Chloe has got... Uh, Some butterflies on her tattoo and uh, the color of her hair based yeah, on the color of the butterfly. Really something we wanted to... Here, the blue butterfly is really, really important and of course, at the end of the game, it's much more important. One of the fans' favorite and, of course, a character we really love, Chloe. She's, uh, she's one of the most important characters because, at the end, the choice is about her. It was really important to create this character the best way possible so the player would learn to care more and more about her. But we want we really wanted her to be not that nice at the beginning. So when she's evolving during the the different episodes, 
uh, and she's getting nicer to Max. People would care, care even more about her because she changed and she likes the fact that she, she, she changed. Uh, if she was the nicest person from the beginning, it wouldn't be, I think, as effective that her uh, going uh, forward and, and changing uh, toward Max. Some, sometimes uh, some players uh, hated uh, Chloe for the, during the first episode and I think it's not a, a bad thing because uh, you can yeah, dislike a lot of, of things about her personality. Uh, and after an episode 3 and of course at the beginning of episode 4, there was really something uh, more to this character and uh, I think it's like having a, in, a, with a, in a real life with a friend, you, there is always some things you, you don't like. And the relation between Max and Chloe talk about that and I think it's really interesting to, to see how the player will learn to, to like more and more Chloe and Sorry. I think it was one of the biggest challenge of the of, of the of the writing process to because we have five episodes we have a, a limited amount of time and we need to find the good the good beats and the, the good pacing to make those characters e evolve it's a really intimate story and it's mostly just centered on um, just emotional moments. All of the major choices that you make in the game are emotional. The heart of it is the relationship between Max and Chloe. It gets really dark <laughs> and things get really hard for Chloe and really emo emotional. In the game, one of our goal was also to be able to talk about real life issues, about some social themes and difficult themes that, um, that can be experienced in real life. Um, I mean, it's different to other games where there are bigger issues like uh, situation of life or death or war or stuff like that. And in in this game, we wanted really to, to focus on more human issues on, on a smaller level. The mood of the game and the themes uh, of the game, it's the themes uh, that we tackle in the game are not something that you that you see often in other games. We try to be mature about it. We, we, we try not to force it onto players and we try not to be too brutal about it. We, we have issues like uh, domestic violence, family issues. So talk about drugs, alcoholism, uh, and depression. It's really part of a, of a reality and I think it, it was really important for us to not avoid that. And I think it's a, a great uh, video game. is also a great media to talk about that because as a player, you will be involved uh, maybe more than mm. just looking at a, a movie or reading a book, you will be really part and actor of this yeah. experience. We are not sure that uh, Square Enix, the publisher, would, uh, would approve all the, the scenes, the intense scenes we have and how we deal with them. And really early in the discussions, we were relieved to, to, to see that they didn't want to change anything. They just wanted to make sure that we deal properly with the scenes or themes. And this is exactly what was uh, what were our intentions, so... It's again a, a key scene uh, for episode one. It's the first time uh, you see Nathan and Chloe. First scene with the character is really, really important. We got a lot of, inf yeah, of information to, to give to the player. And we needed to show that Nathan was quite a, a troubled troubled child, a teenager, I mean. Uh, so this is him talking to himself at the beginning. We, we, we had to fine tune and to find the, the good words to use. Then we see Chloe for the first time. We have to show what's, what's her character. So she's direct and, and, and a bit uh, pushy to Nathan. Um, we need still to understand what's, what's happening. So they're talking about money, about drugs. We, we had to give, to find the right hints to give, to explain, to explain things so, so we don't want to lose the player. God is a punk ass who begs like a little girl and talks to himself. You don't know who the fuck I am or who you're messing around with. Where'd you get that? What are you doing? Come on, put that thing down. Don't ever tell me what to do. I'm so sick of people trying to control me. You are going to get in hella more trouble for this than drugs. This scene, this is the starting point of Max discovering that she has this weird power because basically this adrenaline rush and throwing, looking at Chloe getting shot, that's how she, she can trigger that for the first time and she don't know really why, but that's this, the, the seriousness of the situation, then, then you'll go back, go back in, in the art class. So we really tried on this scene to show the déjà vu feeling, so the editing and the shots was, were there to, 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 to give this 
weird feeling to the player that, okay, I'm living that again and again, looking at the different moments that the player sh saw the first time in this scene. So, yeah, for the editing in this uh, sequence, we wanted to keep the same elements, uh, but not necessarily the same shot. You can see that uh, first three shots are the same, I think, and the, after we begin to change a little the point of view. So you understand that there are the same uh, events going on, but just seeing from a different point of view. And I think to be perfectly honest, we, we don't have a good um, explanation for why she's going back <laughs> to the art class, because we needed it I've for... I've got one, but I will never tell you. I don't think it's a mistake, yeah, because we also need it to explain to the player so the player can learn how things are, work, are working, mm -hmm. and it's quite hard to do. So we, we took this freedom to have Max go back to the art class, which even if it's a bit contradictory with how our power works after that. We are using this to explore more of Max's personality, of the characters, and um, because that, that's the way we created the, we created the character. Max, as we, 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 we've seen that with our, what she's thinking, she has a lot of insecurity, she has issues to go forward in, in, in her life, to, to take decisions. And now she has, she has this ability to not going forward, but going even backward. So it's an interesting storytelling device to to question uh, with our character and with the player, of course, to question uh, choice and consequences, to question fate, to question really interesting issues. I think Max would never have changed uh, as much as here in our story without uh, this power and without this sci-fi element. So it puts the, the player in a very interesting position because she will ask himself the while he's doing some interaction, he can undo the interaction and try something else. But also Max, by doing this, will ask herself, uh, am I doing the right uh, decision? Am I, is it the, the, the good choice or not? So we deconstruct the mechanism of uh, adventure, classic adventure game just by adding this power on the fact that yeah. you can undo things and try another thing. Of course, in most games, you and that's, uh, you can do it with, you know, quick save, quick load. And, but it's, yeah, like you said, it's only the player who do that. And, and that's one of the main theme of the game, that if, if I had the power to rewind and to change things, should I do it? Because sometimes it can be really seen as, as, as lying, as if I say a lot of things that you don't like, and if I go back in time and don't say them to try to, so you're not not angry at me, it's it's a bit tricking. So we are really asking those questions, and in the beginning of the game, we are letting the player and Max do it a lot. She's getting to to make a lot of friends with this rewind, but later in the game, and especially in episode five, we are really questioning this to see. Maybe, maybe it wasn't the right thing. Maybe what you did to try to lie to people with your power, was it really good? And that's something that can be interesting for the story, but also to ask the player at, at, at a moment. I think this is a, what we wanted to do also with yeah, this game, so to show yeah. that it's difficult to make the choice that's and it's even have. more difficult to live with it, but you have to learn to, to do still that. Have to, and even if you could hesitate a lot, there is no perfect way to do things. Okay, if I'm crazy, Anybody? I might as well go all the way. Bueller? Can I actually reverse time? So, and so that's basically that the first time you will, the player will actively rewind. So, so we have to, we have Max thinking that, okay, I just got, got back in time. I mean, this, uh, the art class. Uh, and so that's why, that's why we made her break her camera because we needed to have an element that the player will, will see that we will rewind. So we, we can really explain how do you rewind. So Max broke her camera and then she's thinking, Okay, if I get if I got back in time, maybe I can try to do it again and 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 revert that. So that's the first real rewind the player is actively doing. We, we, it's okay. We we don't really want the, the players to use the rewind all the time. But since um, it's important in the beginning of the game to really show to the to really show the players the tools he, he have, and it was important for us to have this in this scene to have a, use a lot of use of the rewind so he can really okay. I know how it is now, and now I decide if I use it or not. I hope I have enough time to get to the bathroom. Please, please. I can't tell anybody. They'll think I'm crazy. Since we are really playing the game with the point of view of Max, for her, not everything is clear. So it shouldn't be clear for the player. So, but there is a lot of hints that should really guide the players to understand what's happening. We have a lot of uh, um, symbolism with an tot totem spirit animals. We have the doe and you can clearly see in episode four that the doe is, is linked to, to Rachel. And it's basically some, somehow a presence of Rachel that's guiding, guiding, guiding Max at, at moments. I'm not sure that a lot of players notice that, but in episode two, actually, when you see the, the doe in, in the junkyard, it's 
precisely where, yep. where Rachel is buried. There is this mystic feeling around the town, and since we didn't want to, to clearly explain everything, it, it's, it's part of what makes Arcadia Bay a bit, a bit different and a bit special. So here yeah, we're going to play a, a bit of the junkyard scene. Yes, so it's uh, we we love the junkyard scene because a lot of different uh, elements. But uh, the first one I think is the environment. I think uh, the environment artists have made something incredible here. For Life is Strange, we really wanted to have a, a stylized rendering. We didn't want it to to be to have, to be re realistic or. So every texture has been hand painted to give this impressionistic feeling. And I think in, in the junkyard it's really interesting because there is so many details that that's where this kind of simpler simpler texture are working well. Because if, if this, this scene was overly detailed with cracks in, in the rust and everything, it would would become really noisy to look at. We did a lot of uh, work on, on the lighting effects and the atmosphere, so it was really important for us to capture this morning feeling with uh, very, very cold colors in, in the fog, but a, 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 sli a slightly warm sun that just bring, bring some, some uh, soft and warm feeling to the scene. This scene is also a good example of um, what we want to do in, uh, in terms of uh, environmental uh, storytelling. Uh, we've got a, lo a lot of different objects were there and was their own story and... Okay, let's do this. Can you find five bottles while I prep the shooting range? Beer and guns? Nice combo. You can handle it. Now go find us five bottles. This is one of the please, best please. puzzles of the game, I think. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> I, think the... I think it's mostly the final bottle that was really hard to find and we, we did a mistake on it because it was maybe too well hidden. Our goal at, for this was just to allow the player, to, to push the player to visit the place while looking for those bottles because there is a lot of interesting things to discover. Basically, the junkyard is where Chloe brought Max to, to try her power, but it's also where Chloe and Rachel were hanging out together before Rachel disappeared. So this, this place here was this small hideout for Chloe and Rachel. And we tried a lot of what we did in the whole game with the environmental storytelling can be seen here because there is a lot of everything that we really like to, to do to tell with the environment. It's a good way to, of course, to show more to the player. So it's And it's, it's also to give rewards to the player who want to know more about the characters and who is curious. Uh, because you you can do the you can do this whole scene without uh, looking at every details, but there is some hidden stuff. This one is harder to find. I think that not every player find it. But and this is a big letter that Clo that uh, Rachel was wanted to write to to Chloe and maybe didn't never never gave it to her. In Life is Strange, we really try to put a lot of attention to the details. So we have a lot of various levels of things, and if if you look around, you can find some really, really small details that are useless to the main story, but interesting. Actually, we start to play with that, putting more and more things in corner, in dark, uh, dark area, to see if uh, the uh, player yeah. can uh, spot it or, or not. And usually they did. There's a noticed thing that we thought we th they, they could not notice, like on a shirt, we have letters that when you put in the right order, it says, no fucks given, and they noticed. I don't know about this. Are you afraid of getting in trouble? Oh, boo-hoo, Max is afraid. I know you can handle this, and I'm here to guide you. Make me proud, sister. <laughs> Life yeah. is Strange is a, is, is a, really is a game about choice and consequences, so we have a lot of choice you can make in the game, which will have consequences later on uh, in the same episode and or in the other episode. And, and there is one big choice in, in this scene, right, that will happen, for example. Yeah, the, the idea for each choice is, is really to have not easy choice to take, even if it's not the life or and death choice, uh, uh, like you could have uh, in other game, or it's, it's more everyday life choices. The important is really to, to make your own and to decide to live with it. So that's why with the uh, max power, it, it, it's of course more difficult because you can try a choice you're not sure you're going to rewind and you're going to make the other one but the important is if you want to continue and to to move on you have to keep on one and uh, live with the consequence so this is 
in yeah. this choice this in particular. Uh, what do you want to do, Michel? Um, first one. <laughs> I don't think I would shoot uh, a guy uh, okay. anyway, so I would say... I, so I, we won't I, shoot. I won't so you can see directly some consequence. It means that you don't have gun anymore because Frank is going to take it. Chloe will be pissed off. You can, of course, rewind and and try the other one. But something that's really interesting, because it was, it was a, a lot of work at the beginning because we were thinking that if you have the rewind, does it not completely destroy the, the fact that you are making choices? Uh, and actually, we've seen that players are really, really hesitating. We've seen, uh, we've seen, uh, uh, we've watched some some let's play video, and we've seen players just even if they knew that they could go back, they were hesitating so much when they make a choice. I think it's it's interesting. He will be out of the campus for the first time for the yes. player. So this is the first time the player will be able to use uh, his power when he wants. He, he can do before, but there is no so many uh, interaction and puzzles. Here, there is a, we really wanted to have a, a lot of different things to do, talk with people, use the power just to to see fun stuff. But we. We use this this kind of environment for, for for the players who like to take their time and just to talk to characters to to look around. It it really gives a sense of, of presence to Max to the world. The important aspect of the game is to really to give some rewards to the player who want to do that and to want to take his time. So with this kind of sequences, for example, we we give what we call a reward, but in fact it's just new element uh, of the game. For example, here you will have new layer of music. You can hear some new layer of music. You will have all those camera shots that you can't have inside uh, the cl yeah, classic walkthrough and classic game gameplay in third person. So this kind of uh, um, beautiful shots you, you have only because you have chosen to take your time and to sit on the fountain. So the music, the shots, and of course the voiceover of Max also at the beginning. We hear what Max is thinking uh, just here. So this kind of rewards will push, uh, we think, the player to, to do that again and again. So this is really something we wanted to have. In this game, it's always feeling a bit like what what Max is is feeling, and um, it was re we really wanted to focus on on those uh, those moments. It was really capturing capturing the moment when you when you can really take your time to reflect on yourself, and that's what Max is doing in 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 those scenes. That's something that not a lot of games are doing to let the player take his time because in in a lot of games it's just like you need to go forward, you need to go to this checkpoint, you need to do this and this. Since the beginning, we wanted the rewind to be uh, a tool that the player can use when he wants, where he wants. It, it, it won't be uh, scripted uh, rewind seconds, for example. On a technical point of view, you have to record all the different things that happen in the scene. Since you can rewind time, you can basically be at any part of the scene at any moment you like. Uh, designing puzzles with the rewind was very, very hard. When you think it's done, you think you've seen everything about it, you think the situation is in place and it's going to be working well, there's always this tiny little thing that's fucking it up. Those elements are not really deterministic, so when you rewind, you're not sure that you will be able to restore the, uh, the, um, the particle system in the same state. Seriously, do not forget I need those papers before tonight. Like now. Thanks, Sherry. And this is the dormitories. This is also something that was interesting for us is uh, to talk about dorm life. We wanted to use this setting because we can really talk about social issues like the girls have their room. Do you really like the people who, who live next to you? How the relationship are working in, inside, the, inside the dormitories? Like right now, it's interesting if you have different music that can come from the different rooms. Um, it's a really interesting setting to, to set up a lot of characters easily. Here, the idea is really to again have this uh, believable universe of the students we have to to focus on um, what we want to tell and what we want to develop in each episode alisa is getting hit or in danger by something and you can or you can or you you, you can decide or not to use the rewind power to warn her and to actually to get her out of trouble and again i think it's it's links to also the kate story and this kind of stuff is it's not just here to have fun, it's also to 
talk about uh, those difficulties you can have when you uh, you can be so, someone like Alisa and uh, wow. having yeah, this kind cool. of problems. And it's always a way to find the, the little details and little elements that will um, bring more to the characters how we are defining them without sometimes telling telling too much. So it, this is the same actress as uh, Chloe, yeah, the two so main actresses who are playing Max and Chloe did, uh, uh, did also uh, the other uh, students and so you can there is some of Chloe inside each one of them. <laughs> you can see Max and Chloe here. Uh, the body animation uh, is done in motion capture uh, on this project. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, shooting uh, in motion capture with uh, with uh, French companies. Uh, the two main, uh, so Max and Chloe, like for the voice actor, yeah. in fact, they are always played by the same actress. Uh, Serena and uh, Gabrielle. Uh, so all the body language and the body animation you will see in the in the game uh, are are done by them. Uh, and so in each scene we we work the we discuss about the scene with them and they add some. Mm. Both of them they have given something to the character even for Max because Serena was a bit shy at the beginning of the project and at the end of the project she was. She, she was different and we can see the evolution of Max inside uh, her acting, so... Who did you tell? The principal. But he didn't seem to believe me. The principal? Are you still 12? That drunk jackass only cares about cash from Blackwell Academy. Don't trust him. I didn't mention you at all. This is the first time we, we will really see the Max universe yeah. uh, by discovering uh, a room, so let's go inside. Yeah. It was a really important scene for us because you're playing as Max in the game, so you al you already start to know some about her with what happened before in episode one. But when you enter her room, it's really her universe. It's uh, everything in this room should describe her, who she is, why she is like this, and speak a bit more about her past. There is quite a lot in yeah, this room, in fact, lot. compared yeah. to the because we we tried, I think, uh, episode after episode, also to focus on different things, and you, we can't put too many objects yeah. in a, in, a, in a room. Uh. If you want to play a character for five episodes, you need to invest in this character, and all those kind of, of details and were really important to to make a connection between the player and and Max to learn a bit more about uh, what she experienced before and maybe also why she is how she is right now. Something we really wanted to have with with Max from is also to have a great contrast between between Max and, and Chloe. So it it was really important to to have those two characters. Max and Chloe are really different. They are quite quite opposite at the beginning of the story. So we wanted that her, her personality and also her universe, her, her rooms reflect that. Uh, and we and we took for Max this a sort of soft softer colors. We have the pink in. Uh, I think our, our, our bed cover is really really soft. You have the the small cushions with the flowers, the teddy bear. We've got a lot of different environments in the game, but uh, we wanted really to to be able to revisit the environments and to have uh, other scenes taking place in the same environments, but telling different stories and. Uh, telling different sequences. So, uh, for example, in this room, uh, when you you go back uh, here in the house in the alternate reality, we will find a, an empty uh, room of uh, an empty Chloe room, and uh, you have been here so many times before mm. the episode four with Chloe, having fun with Chloe, uh, listening to music, yeah. um, going back here. Uh, without anything, you 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 will directly see what you've lost and what this another reality uh, means for Chloe and for you. Max, try to find the light for the pool. I want to see the sharks. Otters don't like sharks; they bite. So do I. Hit that light. We've done the same with uh, the swimming pool, for example. We've got yeah. a, a great scene in the swimming pool. Uh, uh, between Max and Chloe when they are alone uh, during the night and after you got this huge vortex party uh, which is, is really a really contract. different uh, uh, atmosphere so this is kind of on the production point of view it's basically a brand new environment but it's still in the same place uh, and, and with a lot of similarities so it's really Im important to show it was important for us to show the changes that Max can create with, with our power and the changes to, to the characters and to the world
stop treating me and my mom like we're your family platoon? Hey, leave Joyce out of this. I wish you'd leave Joyce, like now! Seeing uh, this kind of uh, family violence and uh, it's, it's something you can have encounter as a player. I think we all know some people who got some difficulties and you can have by yourself also. Here, the choice you're going to take uh, will have consequences uh, on the relation between Max and Chloe, but also uh, about, uh, on uh, uh, his her father. Hey, you okay? Welcome to the real step douches of Arcadia Bay. I'm sorry. For what? He would have been a bigger dick if he caught you in here. Da David could mean. seem very archetypal. Yes, and, uh, again, yeah, one dimension at the, at the beginning, but, but then we are uh, making, yeah, making Episode after evolve. episode, you can see that maybe he's, he's very... Uh, he's got his own reason to oh, be his own like this. And I, I think at that... Uh, not at any moment we are justifying the fact that he could beat Chloe or be or be how he, how it is, but just showing a perspective that not everything is black or white. So we did a lot of research to be sure that we were we were dealing with with those themes in in a good way. Too much gamifying this, we could really maybe hurt some people. And uh, if we are talking about issues those people have had, and not not making it right, it could be worse, and it couldn't be the opposite of what we wanted to do at first. So here is a Kate character that you have met uh, in the first episode, but not so much. And the episode two is really focused on Kate and Kate's story and Kate's difficulties. So but this scene is a, is, a, is a good way again to how we try to advance the story about Kate, but also try to show more of the other characters, Victoria and Taylor. So we are continuing of what was shown about Victoria in episode one, like, of course, that she's uh, really a mean person, that she was, uh, she's harassing Kate uh, because she makes fun of her. Um, and so this kind of scene, yes, is, a, is we are really trying to advance the story, bring bring out more of the characters, and of course, there's great, great cameras on it. All over my face. Max Selfie thought she was a badass taking that picture. Uh, we wanted really to talk about the, all the cyberbullying, the fact that it's quite difficult for a teenager nowadays to to be connected as uh, everyone is uh, now. I, I think yeah, everyone yeah. has got a, a phone, uh, is connected uh, always. We are um, using the text message a lot and we are making fun yeah. with that. So we are really thinking about the both sides of the, of the social but media. Uh, on the other end, you've got this dark aspect uh, yeah. of internet which could be really really uh, difficult to live i think a, a lot of uh, players could recognize some of them inside uh, inside kate and we, we've received a lot of letters from uh, from players who say that that helped us also to realize uh, what they've been through yeah we wanted to have this scene since the beginning we are quite happy that okay. we managed to we keep managed it to and keep uh, it. work with Quranix was great for that. So we, we managed to keep a, a lot of difficult scenes uh, like this one. Oh, yeah. It's not only uh, about talking about the themes, it's also to be sure that it's anchored inside our story. And here, of course, this experience and the Kate story will uh, push Max to think about our power, to think about the consequences, to yeah. think about the relation and, with and other characters. That's actually the one time in, in the game where Max's power fails her. So when you when you arrive on the roof, you you are really by yourself. You have to to talk Kate out of jumping, and um, and this was also the second part of what we wanted to do with this theme is to show that if you care to to the people you like, you can you can help them, and that's basically what Max has to do as it at this moment is really to to care about Kate to to. To show her that she she knows she knows her that she's a friend and to really take out of, of of jumping. I think that something that was interesting on writing all this these scenes and is even in in episode one, you know, Kate was was written as a again some somehow a sort of of archetype. She's a bit religious. She's a, a for abstinence. She has this uh, basically pro life uh, ideas. So maybe some of the players could think that she's boring character like but the way we evolved her and write her in the other episode we really wanted to show that even 
if you go past the first appearance of someone that something that you might feel uh, not interesting or different to you you can find really uh, good things and interesting things in, in each person and uh, I was really happy the way that the, the community reacted to, to Kate as a, as a character. We didn't want to to gamify this kind of thing. We still have to, to have rules for how, how the things, even if it needs to be really in the background and for the player to not to, to see those rules. But at, in the end, we still need to to create the scene with, with the scripting and, and a way to make it work. So it was really hard to find the good balance to to make it feel the more transparent as possible for the player and just find a good way to have the feeling that it's really a dialogue between between Max and Kate. And it was a really hard one to write. There is a lot of branches, there's a lot of variations. Uh, and I think even in the voice recording, it took, took a really long time. Yeah. It was one full session just for um, uh, Hannah and Diane, who play who plays Kate. Uh, it was really important for us to keep this going after in the other episode, and not just okay, we have done the scene, and so mm. no, we 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 go to the to the next to the following of the game. I'm going to be here for another day until my family comes out to visit. How are they treating you? Like they need to protect me forever. They're so upset, and I know they feel guilty, even though they didn't do anything. I was surprised how many we wanted from to talk about this team, or this theme of, of euthanasia, uh, but but to find a way to talk about it uh, <laughs> that would be respectful for any sort of position. Because yeah, it was really important to to not try to to say this is right, this is wrong, and and to let the the player uh, exp really see how he wants to 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 play this scene at this moment based on what he felt for for the situations for Chloe, for her parents, and everything. And that was quite. Yeah. That was not easy to find to find this balance when, when doing that. And again, it's because it's interactive and it's a video so game that this scene is so strong. I think if you just see a scene and just okay, this is the, the director point of view, and that's it. I, I accept it or not. But here it will be your choice. Yeah. You really have to take your time and think about it before making your choice. So and we've seen all kind of reactions. We've seen players who immediately say. No, I can't do it. Or, or other player we immediately, immediately accept what Chloe is asking. So of course, it's Chloe. I'm, I'm accepting. And a lot of others who are hesitating for five, ten minutes or so. And I think that we've been, I, I, I like that we did that, but we've been a bit mean to the player because we, we give them a third choice of maybe I cannot take any choice on this, but then you have still to take a choice. Yeah. But it was, I think it was stronger because it was, what we wanted to do with that is to show that at a point you have to to take to uh, responsibility for your actions and decide something. You cannot get an easy way out. We took a lot uh, of photographs, even some of the like the, the no weapons, the the, the no bullying, no weapon. Yeah. The, we we took photographs in some high school in. Um, it wasn't in Oregon, but it was near Washington, so it's almost it's still in the Pacific, Pacific Northwest, near Seattle. Uh, and and we took some of those. Uh, we just adapted some of those posters. And even for, for example, like this for the for the for the the, 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 the map, um, we we did a lot of research, finding real maps of of real buildings and trying to be quite precise with um, the the scale, the, the the layout, the locations, because we really wanted everything to feel genuine and to. You know, sometimes we, you can go really wrong in a game if you just start to uh, to forget about the, the scale and, and the detail. So we really wanted to have things right, like having this kind of uh, fire hose at this, this this place. And since the game takes place in October, there is and we are in the US, there is already a lot of uh, Halloween decorations and stuff like that. We wanted to have the game uh, at the anchor in reality, but also we. Of course, we have a lot of references. We are huge fan of some TV shows, of uh, of books, of movies, and um, I think that in Life is Strange, the setting was really good to to have a lot of those Easter eggs that that will speak to the players and and put the game the game into into a into a pop culture reality. So. There is a lot of stuff that is scattered around around the game. If you look at every license plate in the game, you will see that the letters they are meaning some. In episode one, is titles of TV shows that somehow we liked or that was that were somehow inspiration in mm. some some part for for the game. In episode two, it's movies. Like, yeah. In the dormitories, you have you have the room. Um, which uh, red room? Someone wrote red room on on, on the slate. It's the number of the room in Shining. Yes, and so it's, it shows that we love 
us are, as developers of the movie, but also that the characters in the game, of course, know about this movie because it exists in, in their real world and they are making jokes about it. We knew that we had to hire an American scriptwriter. We sent some tests to a few writers uh, that were recommended and we knew. And uh, Christian Divine, um, we had we had a Skype with, with Christian. After maybe two minutes, we all knew that it was it was going to be him. I had this kind of vision of him uh, in the office uh, uh, working with us. Since we, we've chosen him, he was uh, at 100% and even 200% yeah, in the project <laughs> uh, with us. He completely understood <laughs> what we want to do uh, with the characters and with the story and with the different themes we wanted to talk about. During the motion capture session, we, we asked the actor and the actress to Uh, when they meet, uh, Max and Warren meet uh, the first time here uh, on the parking oh, lot, we, we asked them, they were trying Thanks. to kiss themselves, no but you can't do that uh, in the United no States. In fact, as, as French, we were okay. thinking that, yeah, it's cool, they are going to, to kiss themselves. Well, Warren, we yeah, tried to Warren kiss wanted Max, to, to kiss Max on the we've cheek, never on done the that, so we changed uh, after discussion with a writer and a lot of friends uh, we, we say okay yeah we should switch to a hug so we change the animation to have just while and try to hug max and not kiss her and yeah this is a kind of mistake we can do as french people so we have to be very careful about and that and it was really good to because in france you can yeah and, and say in france, hello by uh, kissing a girl like this by just having a, a peek on the cheek and not in the us and this is the kind of stuff where having a, an american writer was really needed. Uh, we, we made some other mistakes, like on this parking at the beginning we had the parking spots we, which were really small and Christian said to us that this is not American parking spots in the US, you have large parking spots yeah. because we have big cars, so we changed that. Uh, and we did that for various things, like sometimes a, a sign why not at the right position or something that was not perfectly uh, true to reality. So, oh. Chloe's house. This is the f very, very first scene we've made for the game. Uh, so this is really the scene that uh, we have modified a lot to create uh, Life is Strange. And this this is the also the, the scene with, with which we, we, we sold the game to, to Square Enix. That's the yeah. scene we, we showed to publisher. The first time I tried the game, it was the Chloe's room, a really early prototype. And I've It felt fantastic to play it. I was literally smiling while playing it because uh, the yeah the scene was was working really great already. Even even though the the environment the characters were not final, it was it was really really good to play. And we we decided to use this scene because there is every mechanism is here, but there is also the, a scene that shows the, really what what life is strange is because it's a story about those two girls trying to reconnect. We had the two main characters. We had. Um, strong strong issues with what happened with David later so we have the, the environmental storytelling when you're visiting uh, the a different part of the house we have Zen sequence it had the feeling that we really wanted to push for the game this slow paced uh, nostalgic feeling I think that this scene is really a really good one to show that in, in episode one at the beginning it, w it wasn't exactly that, like that we got different outcomes yeah. and uh, so the scene which is in the that is in the game uh, now is, is really different from the f very first prototype at the very beginning it was only the the arguing with David we we have uh, yeah. done in uh, in motion capture and uh, I've played with Jean-Luc, so the Jean-Luc... Yeah, you, you, you were doing Chloe. Yeah, I was <laughs> playing Chloe and Jean-Luc were playing... No, I was playing David. And Jean-Luc is a, um, a great writer who has uh, written the original story. So we have played all together because we, we didn't want to... We didn't add the money, yeah, in fact, to, to have a, a optic motion capture uh, uh, shooting. So we try uh, by yourself uh, to, and I to, to have animation for the prototype. And the animation is quite ugly, the characters also oh are Oh yeah, the ugly. first version were ugly, and there were uh, at the beginning no textures, we had version yeah. with only the grey characters, we were really weird without hair, so we had a hairless Chloe. And I think, test. yeah, Max, <laughs> your Max is, is quite frightening. The smoke and all the the FX elements, they are made following the same ID yeah. as non-realistic, but like, it looks like an un undrawn smoke, a little. Yeah, <laughs> But it's, it's really, really beautiful. And our FX artist has made a lot of FX like this. We can see also uh, the wind uh, outside. Yeah, the wind effects yeah. effect are, are really beautiful. And we tried to be 
as close as possible of, of the concept art. Like, ideally the game, we, we wanted it to look like uh, some sort of animated concept art. And I think it's really, the, the 3D, uh, 3D on, on development artist and, and, and the concept artist, they did a really great job on that because if, if you look at, at the concept art for, for this room and the 3D, the 3D final scene, it's quite, quite pretty close. We, we have those, those low detail textures, but this feeling of light and, and, it's, but it's a lot of details that we tried everywhere. Even if the lighting, if you look just at the light on, on the, uh, the drawer, even on the light, we have the, this small bending that gives the feeling that the light is hand painted. So we did a lot of work on everything on lighting, f, uh, visual effects, textures to have this cohesive style. And sometimes the player might not completely notice it, but it still gives this um, this cohesion to the game. Like for example, for the for the Chloe's house, how rich uh, Chloe's parents are, so what kind of house they can afford. So this get painted. In concept art, we do like every room, or even the map, the floor map. In Max rooms, there's a lot of photos on the wall, because she likes to take photos, and you know, you get like the bands, poster of bands, which she like, you know, you have, you have to feel like how, who is, who they are, and, you know, just by looking at the room. Mm -hmm. 